hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust this sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ the Please do take a seat as we prepare to begin our service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Very warm welcome to St Andrews, whether you're here in person or joining us online. It is great to have you with us. I'm David, I'll be leading us through the service this morning. Uh, and one of our readers, Helen, will be preaching later in the service. Uh, it's also Safeguarding Sunday, which uh, so we're going to be thinking a little bit through our service uh, about safeguarding and how we protect and look after one another. Uh, and tying in with that as our theme, we're looking at <coughs> caring for others. 
Paul says this in his letters to the Philippians, after the example of Jesus. In humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Let's uh, join together in our opening prayer. We meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain, and heals our wounds. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you are a God of love and compassion. And we pray that each one of us, whatever our situation, uh, would know your hand over us this morning. We ask that we may meet with you and be equipped to walk with you in the week ahead. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our opening song speaks of the hope that we have only through Jesus Christ, but not only us, a hope that reaches around the world as we look around at a world in turmoil. Jesus is the hope, Jesus, hope of the nations. Please stand if you're able as we sing together. be seated. Well, Jesus not only brings us hope, he also brings us forgiveness when we come to him and confess our failings, our rebellion, uh, our shortcomings. We can trust in God's promise that he will forgive us and wipe those things away. So let's join together in our confession, saying together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect, the special prayer for today. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you, so you are to love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So do greet those just around you with a smile, a wave, a handshake, some words of greeting. is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. This is an open table. We welcome all baptised Christians who know and love the Lord Jesus Christ and are in good fellowship with their own church to share the bread and wine with us. Uh, we welcome children and young people who've been baptised and confirmed or prepared for communion in an Anglican church uh, to receive the bread and wine with us. Uh, if you're not ready to receive communion for whatever reason, please do come forward to receive a blessing. Please just keep your hands by your side. Uh, we'll be serving here at the front and in the side chapel. Uh, and in either place, uh, we offer the option of either the shared cup or uh, bread dipped in the wine or just bread only. If you prefer to receive the shared cup, please come to your right in either of the uh, places. If you prefer to receive bread only or bread dipped in the wine, please come to your left. Uh, and if you're 
coming to the main front area. If you can return by the side aisles, that will be helpful. Uh, and it just makes the flow a little easier. As we receive, the music group will sing, and then there's a song for us to join in, uh, if you would like to. So draw near in faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, and his blood, which was shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith, with thanksgiving. A reminder too, if you need uh, gluten-free uh, bread uh, or wafers, then please come to the front station here and just indicate that uh, when you come forward. Please do come forward on the front rows.
we join together in the prayer after communion. Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm now going to invite Richard Lawrence, who's our church safeguarding officer, to, uh, to come forward just to share something with us. Morning, everyone. As David said, for those who don't know me, my name's Richard, and I'm the safeguarding officer here. Um, in a few minutes, I'm going to be saying some words about safeguarding here at St Andrews um, and in particular how it's a team effort and we all very much have a role to play. Um, in the meantime um, our children and young people are going to be leaving to go to their groups and, and whilst they're on their way out we're going to play a video, a short video which talks about some of those themes. Um, David would you like to say a prayer of blessing? Yes let's do that. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our children and young people and we ask for your blessing on them today. Uh, we pray that for each and every one of them this would be a safe place, a place where they know they are loved and cared for, a place where they might meet with you and grow in friendship with one another. In Jesus' name, Amen. So if uh, Sunday Club and uh, Amplify would like to head off, bless you, have a great time together this morning. And uh, then we're going to watch the short video that, uh, that Richard's spoken of. We believe that church should be a place where every child and adult can feel and be safe. But this doesn't happen by accident. That's why we have a safeguarding coordinator who helps us to do the things we need to do to keep children and adults safe. This includes recruiting our workers safely, reviewing and keeping our safeguarding policy up to date and responding to any concerns. We regularly train our staff and volunteers in working safely. They are all accountable to each other and their leaders. Our leadership team has overall responsibility for making this happen. But we can't do this on our own. We need your help too. Please respect boundaries. If you're not an approved youth or children's worker, don't wonder where their activities are taking place. Please support our safeguarding coordinator. It's their job to help ensure everyone is safe and is often a challenging task. If you see or hear anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, please report your concerns, even if they seem small. Safer places are not difficult to create if we all play our part. Let's make this place safer for everyone. 
together. Okay, so we do all want St Andrews to be a place where anyone can walk in and feel welcomed and loved and part of a community. But with this openness comes responsibility, particularly towards those who may be more vulnerable. In Bebbington, safeguarding responsibilities are carried out by a team. So as safeguarding officer for St Andrews, my role includes reviewing and keeping up to date all our safeguarding policies and responding to any concerns. And I do this very much together with Gwen, Gwen Derrick, who's my counterpart in Townfield. Linda Wright is the lead in safer recruitment for all our staff and volunteers. We do a lot of training, of um, safeguarding training for our staff and our volunteers, and the office team help keep, make sure all our training records are kept up to date. Of course, we work very closely with the clergy on all of this, and we report into the PCC, who have ultimate responsibility for safeguarding and for making sure everything happens. But even with a team of people like this, um, this isn't enough. We absolutely do need your help, as the video says. Each one of us has a part to play in creating a culture where everyone can feel safe and cared for. So, please support our safeguarding team. Be alert. And if you see or hear anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, please report your concerns, even if they seem small. If you want further information, have a look at our safeguarding notice board, which is over on this side of the church, where there's a lot more information, or come and have a word to me afterwards. Thank you. Thanks very much, Richard. It's a message that has, uh, that many organisations and churches and other places have been trying to communicate for some years now that safeguarding is everybody's responsibility. It's easy to see something of concern and think someone else will deal with that. Uh, and that's when issues are not dealt with. So thank you for your support for Richard and all of us on the team. Uh, we're going to stand to sing again now as we think about caring for others. Our next hymn, Brother, Sister, let me serve you. Please stand if you're able as we sing together.
seated as St. Kate brings us our Bible readings and then Helen will come and speak to us. Um, the first Bible reading is taken from Jeremiah 22, verses 1 to 5, and can be found on page 781 of the Bibles. This is what the Lord says Go down to the palace of the King of Judah and proclaim his message here. Hear the word of the Lord to you, King of Judah, you who sit on David's throne. You, your officials and your people who come through these gates. This is what the Lord says. Do what is just and right. Rescue from the hand of the oppressor the one who has been robbed. Do no wrong or violence to the foreigner, the fatherless or the widow. And do not, do not shed innocent blood in this place. For if you are careful to carry out these commands, then kings who sit on David's throne will come through the gates of this palace, riding in chariots and on horses accompanied by their officials and their people. But if you do not obey these commands, declares the Lord, and I swear by myself that this palace will become a ruin. The second Bible reading is taken from Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46, and can be found on page 995 of the Bibles. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats <coughs> on his left. And the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was ill and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needed clothes and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was ill and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or ill or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to, the, to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you're here this morning, and we ask that you'll teach us, strengthen us, challenge us for the week and the times ahead. We ask this in your name. Amen. So, well, here we are in Matthew 25 and Jeremiah 22. I just have to tell you, uh, I had a friend who became a Christian who was a forester, and when he was a new Christian, he was reading Matthew 25, and he thought, oh, go goats are lovely, intelligent, happy things, and, um, and sheep, what stupid things that they, they sort of wander off and uh, just generally need a lot of looking after. So he started praying, Lord, make me a goat. <laughs> and then he reread it and realised he didn't want to be a goat at all, he wanted to be a sheep. So I think of my friend Peter this morning. But we're considering these two passages because it's Safeguarding Sunday. And safeguarding isn't something, a word, that's in the Bible. But there are some principles that we can find that are helpful as we think through this from a particularly Christian perspective. So our first reading was from Jeremiah 22. And uh, Jeremiah the prophet was told to go down uh, to the king's palace. <laughs> Uh, this is, in fact, the only map we're going to get this morning. Uh, but uh, Jeremiah, if Jeremiah went down to the king's palace, then he was in the temple. That was the only thing that 
up. So Jeremiah put, indicated where he was when he was told to go down and speak to the king of Judah. We don't know which king of Judah, but nonetheless, the king of Judah and all of his important courtiers and officials. Hear the word of the Lord to you, king of Judah and important officials, says Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says. Do what is just and right. Now, I can hear you rumbling in your hearts and brains. Why would the Lord bother to send Jeremiah down to the king to tell him to do what is just and right? Well, you will have recalled by now, having rumbled a bit, that actually this, that the, the king and the officials were part of God's covenant people. They were part of God's people. And there was a covenant that was between the people of Israel, God's people, and God himself. And there were covenants, the, the covenant we know of today, the most common one, is a, is a marriage. And that covenant is described as a marriage in the Old Testament. But actually, in the Old Testament, there were very common uh, covenants between nations. They would be uh, made on the boundaries, usually between one nation and the other, usually a big nation and a small nation. And they would have an agreement, a treaty, in which there were responsibilities and uh, prescribed things to do and not to do, and within it, each side, there would be penalties and rewards for sticking to it or not sticking to it. And in fact, you can see that God reminds uh, the king of those penalties, those agreed penalties and rewards, in verses 4 and 5 of Jeremiah, where he talks about the, the, uh, the uh, palace being a ruin and the people gone. And this covenant responsibility for Israel. So each side agreed and each side said they would do something. And for Israel, that responsibility was to be holy by walking in the law. And that is the Hebrew idiom, to walk in the law with, uh, with God. And that law included sacrifices, it included family life, and it included to do what is right and just in society. And the reason that God prescribed that is because, he says, in all through the way, the way through the first giving of the law in Leviticus, be holy because I, the Lord, your God, am holy. And it's peppered throughout Leviticus, that first uh, extended giving of the law, he will give the laws about, for example, social justice and conclude it with, I am the Lord your God. Not because these things are right and just, they are, but because I am the Lord your God. So that was Israel's covenant responsibility. So this, what Jeremiah is saying, is not a new instruction, it's a covenant reminder. This is what the Lord says, do what is just and right. I am the Lord your God. And then he gives examples of things which in that society were going horribly wrong. Rescue from the hand of the oppressor, the one who has been robbed. Part of holiness is standing with the oppressed and doing something about it. Do no wrong or violence to the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place. That is part of our holy work with God. But you say, well, that covenant was thousands of years old. That covenant 
was for God's people, Israel. What about now? Well, there's a new covenant. And Peter, the Apostle Peter, gives us an instruction. There is a new God's people, and Peter writes to that people, the new people of God. Just as he who called you is holy, so you be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. So it's the same God and the same call to holiness. God has not changed. However, we, God's people, the church, do not walk in the law. Instead, it's very clear that we walk with Jesus. Jesus, we read all the way through the New Testament, replaces the law. When you became a uh, part of God's people in the Old Covenant. If you were a man, you had to be circumcised and agree to certain ways of life, come into the people. Jesus replaces that. Our, in the new people, in the new covenant, it's our response to Jesus. And men and women are equal in that. As we walk through life, Jesus replaces all the sacrifices. Any sacrifice you can look at in the Old Covenant, it's Jesus who's fulfilled them in the New. And when we come to walking in holiness, it's walking with Jesus, and we now understand, as his disciples didn't when he was speaking to them, that we can walk with Jesus directly because Jesus' Spirit is in our hearts. So, what does walking with Jesus look like in a social situation? Well, one of the things obviously we can do is look and see what Jesus uh, teaches us. And, and so hence we have Matthew 25. Now this is part of Jesus teaching about the end of this world and obviously, implicitly, the beginning of the next. And that started at the beginning of the last chapter, chapter 24. And he describes, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his angels with him, he will sit on the glorious throne. The Son of Man is Jesus himself, or later on described as the King. It's Jesus himself. And he's judging all the nations splitting them into two groups the sheep and the goats now jesus is speaking we read that he's telling giving all this teaching about uh, the second coming jesus coming and ending uh, this world he's teaching his own disciples so it's important that they know what he's teaching. And remember that the call to his people is to be holy because I am holy. And Jesus is describing here what holiness looks like in a certain situation. The king, Jesus, will say to those on the right, Come you who are blessed by the Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was ill and you looked after me. In prison and you came to visit me. So this is a mark of holiness. This is a mark in the same way that God gives a, an example of what he's looking for in holiness in that particular situation. This is a mark of holiness. 
And the righteous will, of course, say, well, Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, sick, naked, and in prison? And Jesus then deepens that teaching to beyond what the Lord said to the king in Jeremiah. The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you did for me. Now we're thinking about, as the new people of God, walking with Jesus. And we're lucky enough to be looking at this in the Gospel of Matthew, which happens to be my favourite Gospel. And the presence of God, walking with Jesus, is presented in a very special and clear way in the Gospel of Matthew. We begin right at the beginning with the announcement that Jesus is coming. The virgin will conceive and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel which means Jesus with us. And when we hear that at Christmas, we think, oh my goodness, that's fantastic. God's taken the initiative. He's come here. He lived life like we live. He came to save us. He came to fulfill all that law, to bring us into the covenant in the relationship with God himself. And the very last words of the Gospel echo that. The disciples are given uh, an astonishing commission. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, which incidentally is why the Son of Man can judge all nations, because his disciples have been to them. Baptising those nations in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I have commanded you. And I am with you always to the very end of the age. And again, as I read that, and I think as many of us do, we think that's fantastic. We're given a difficult job, but Jesus is with us. As we walk through our everyday lives, Jesus is with us. We now understand, as I said before, in a way the disciples at that time did not, that Jesus is very intimately with us. God is intimately with us through his spirit. We think that's fantastic. Yet again, God has taken the initiative. But in the middle, we read about Jesus' presence with us. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. In this situation, we are the ones who take the initiative. We are the ones who are alert and see hunger or thirst <coughs> or vulnerability and do something about it. Imagine if we really came across Jesus hungry. What joy would there be in providing food. Imagine if we really <coughs> saw, saw, met Jesus who was in prison and vulnerable. What joy would there be in visiting? And Jesus is saying, I, one of the ways I am present with you is in alertness to that vulnerability. It is, it is as if you are doing it to me. And it's a mark of holiness. So, just to summarise some of the points to sort of think about. Peter writes, just as uh, he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. We're God's covenant people. We haven't just drifted into this. God has done something and we have accepted that and we are in relationship with him and our responsibility is to walk as be holy. Part of that holiness is to echo God's heart for the vulnerable, the powerless, 
those who are potentially unsafe. Do what is just and right. And in, when Jesus says, truly I tell you, whatever you did for the least of one of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Although the responsibility to be holy is to influence our communities, it starts with the brothers and sisters in the church. We have a very special responsibility for all who come into the church, for the vulnerable, the hungry, the sick. So I'm just going to uh, put a picture up and allow us just to contemplate our response to Safeguarding Sunday. We were challenged by Richard in some of the practical things we can do. Safeguarding is a, a legal issue, but for us as Christians it's also a wider issue. People who are not necessarily uh, prescribed under the law, but we care for as well. We have particular responsibility for those who come to our churches and part of our community. We echo God's heart for the vulnerable and it is a mark of holiness. So let's just pause and commit safeguarding in this place, in the diocese, in the church and in the country to God. Lord, we thank you that there are structures that help us care for aspects of the vulnerable. Lord, please prompt us and help us, encourage and strengthen us to play our part in all that you call us to do. Thank you that you are Emmanuel, God, with us. Thank you that you are with us to the end of the age. And thank you that we can respond to you in meeting others' need. We ask this in your name. Thank you, Helen. Uh, would you please stand, if you're able, as we respond by affirming our faith in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the Creed. We say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel as Ian comes to lead us in prayer. Let us continue in prayer. Lord, help us to be a church that loves, that welcomes, that protects. Help us to be a church that listens, learns, serves. Help us to be a church that repents, restores, transforms. Help us to be a church.
church that values, cares, and believes. God of justice and compassion, hear our prayer. Help us, heal us, guide us as we pray. In Jesus' name. We pray for those who serve in a position of leadership in our church. And especially today we pray for David, our rector, and Al, our associate minister. Thank you for their commitment to serve us in this way. As they make decisions, set the culture, and seek to lead us in our worship and wit witness, give them wisdom, humility and courage to follow Jesus' example of servant leadership, we pray. Help us support them in their roles, remember them in our prayers and ensure that they have others around them who can help, challenge and encourage them so that we might be a safer place for everyone. In Jesus' name, Amen. <clears throat> o God of all justice and peace, we cry out to you in the midst of the pain and trauma of violence and fear which prevails in the Holy Land. Be with those who need you in these days of suffering. We pray for people of all faiths, Jews, Muslims, Christians, and for all the people of the land. While we pray to you, O Lord, for an end to violence, and the establishment of peace, we also call to you to bring justice and equity to the peoples. Guide us into your kingdom <coughs> where all people are treated with dignity and honour as your children. For to all of us, you are our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, we remember before you all those who are sick, who are bereaved, or who are in any other trouble in this parish or known to us elsewhere. <coughs> We pray that you will pour out your blessing on them and inspire them with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We bring all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, together in the words which our Lord himself taught us. Praying together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Ian. Uh, one or two things to share with you. If you don't uh, receive our newsletter and you'd like to, please do contact the church office. Uh, they can get it to you by email or uh, hard copy if you need it. 
Um, some things coming up. On Saturday, we're having a prayer breakfast and we would really love you to join us. So what we're doing is we're meeting in the church hall from 9 till 10.30. Uh, we'll have breakfast, sausage and bacon butties, pastries, tea, coffee, juice, um, and chance to chat together over breakfast. And we'll have some time to pray together for our church, our parish, and other wider needs um, in the, uh, for the run-up to Christmas. Uh, now, if you're not used to praying in a group, please don't be put off. If you come along and you pray silently during the prayer time, that's absolutely fine. We would just love you to be there with us. Um, and uh, just join in with the old old men, and that's fine. Uh, we'll have uh, some easy prayer activities too, so uh, children and young people are very welcome to come. And there's no need to book, uh, you can just come along. Um, so just a donation for breakfast, adult two pounds, children a pound, family five pounds maximum. Um, but we don't want that to be a barrier for anyone. We would just love you to be there with us. Um, so if you're free on Saturday, uh, we would love to see you there. Uh, secondly, we have our Christmas leaflets ready for delivery. Um, so if you usually or have agreed to uh, deliver one of those rounds, then please do pick them up from the back afterwards. The ideal time for these to go out would be next weekend or early the following week, um, but the, the critical thing is that they go out before Christmas experience, which is uh, two weeks' time on Saturday the 2nd of December. Um, because that's kind of the big thing on there and then the Christmas services to follow. Um, so thank you so much for those who help with that. Uh, please don't forget to take those with you um, if you uh, are delivering those. Also happening next weekend, uh, Bright and Bebbington have uh, their annual Christmas fair and carol concert on Saturday starting at 12 or 12.30, 12 uh, I'm not absolutely sure which, and then a carol concert at 3.30 um, to, to close off the event. They'd love some of us to come and sing particularly at the concert, so if you're free, do come along, you'd be very welcome, and we'd be glad to just support them with that through the day. And then the following Saturday, 2nd of September, is our big Christmas experience event. Um, it's from three till six, again, put it in your diary, do come along, bring family, friends, anyone you want to. Um, and a reminder of what we're doing, we're having the tree festival in here, uh, we're having interactive drama spots around in between the trees uh, so that people can hear from some of the nativity characters um, and we're having a cafe in the church hall. And we do still need uh, some more people to help with the cafe and to act as stewards so if you could do one or other of those things please have a word with me afterwards or contact the church office early this week. That would really be appreciated. Um, and I think, I, I'm sure I had in my head something else that I needed to share. Yes, that's what it is, of course it is. Uh, so thank you so much to all those who were praying about our interviews for the Leader of Children and Families Ministry. Um, I will have some exciting news for you, but not quite yet. So once we've gone through all the formalities, uh, I'll be able to tell you sometime soon some great news from that. Uh, but thank you so much for your prayers. And watch this space. Uh, so we're going to come to our final song uh, and a great focus as we finish our service. Where should our eyes be but on Jesus Christ, our strength and our hope. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Please stand if you're able as we sing together. Where
Please be seated. Let's uh, commit to God our financial gifts, however they're given, and our lives. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have money to offer, the fruit of our labour and of the skills you have given us. Take us and our possessions to do your work in the world. Blessed be God forever. And a closing prayer. Into the dark places of our world, where people are frightened and hungry, God, bring light, bring love. Into places where people are violent, into places where people are fighting, God, bring light, bring love. Into the places where we feel unsafe, into situations that hurt us and scare us, God, bring light, bring love. We ask our prayers in Jesus' name and in the Holy Spirit's power. As we close our service, we would love you to stay for refreshments. There's tea and coffee at the back. Please do stay for some time to chat. Uh, there will also be members of the prayer ministry team in the side chapel here at the front. Uh, so it's another way in which we care for one another. If you would like somebody to pray with you in confidence, whether it's for yourself or for someone else, please do make your way there. They will be glad to pray for you. Um, and uh, in case you're not aware, later on today, this afternoon, we have our annual Thanksgiving and Memorial service for those who have been bereaved. Uh, that's at four o'clock. And if you or anyone you know would find that helpful, you would be more than welcome to come along at four as we share that time together. A closing prayer of blessing. Now may the blessing of God the Father, who made from one every nation that occupies the earth, of God the Son, who brought us for God from every tribe and language and people and nation, and of God the Spirit, who brings us together in unity, be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen.